Ah, you've made it. Welcome, brother. Or sister. To the moment we've all been waiting for. And the sole reason to become a data scientist. Creating gorgeous, beautiful, extravagant data visualizations. In the last episode, we saw how to add context to our hex projects through text table displays, and single value cells. We continue this contextual journey by adding visuals and leveling up the aesthetic quality of our projects. Today we'll be primarily focusing on the different ways to add chart cells to your project, visualizing temporal data, and visualizing some categorical data. By the end of this, you'll have a deeper understanding of chart cells and how to enhance the visual quality of your guys' projects. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Throughout the series, you guys may or may not have noticed that we are in fact working in a Python environment. Now, a Python environment means we can obviously write Python code, and if you connect all the dots, that means you can most definitely build charts in hex using plotting libraries such as Seaborn, Matplotlib, or Plotly. Now, there's no hard feelings if you chose this path, my friends, because I have also walked this path myself. But I must admit, I do have a soft spot for Hex's native, built-in, point-and-click charting solution. Now, as we embark on this journey on crafting charts for our analysis, it is important to familiarize ourselves with our travel companion, which is the chart cell. For this particular project, we will be focusing mainly on bar and line charts, although Hex has a total of 12 distinct chart types that you can choose from. Now, excluding histogram and pie charts, each chart sticks to this intuitive configuration layout of X axis to Y axis to group by statement. And each of these categories comes with its own little set of customization tricks. For example, under the Y axis, you have the option to add multiple axes to your chart, which can add an extra dimension of depth to your visuals. Use multiple axes if you want your charts to visualize data that has different units or scales. Now, just like the rest of us, even hex charts has its limits and can only handle around 5,000 data points per visualization. However, you can pass in a data set of any size and use things such as aggregations like sums, counts, or group buys in order to get it down to a size that the chart cell can render. And lastly, under the chart type is where you can find all the styling for a hex chart and let your creativity run wild. We have some color options where you can assign default color options that are available inside the chart cell, or you can even add your own with some hex codes. Speaking of adding your own colors, if the default color palette isn't aesthetically pleasing enough, you can create your own color palettes in your workspace settings. Each new palette can hold up to 10 colors and you'll need to define at least five before you're able to save it. To apply this new custom color palette in your projects, you must activate it first, and any chart cells previously used in the default color palette will be updated to this new palette once the cell has been executed. You can enable data labels so that the viewers can get an at-a-glance look at the values that the axes of your charts are supposed to represent, so this is your X label and your Y label, as well as a chart title, and you can even customize or alter the location of the legend in your chart to anywhere such as the top right, bottom right, top left, center, anywhere you want to, anywhere in your hex chart you want the legend to be. So now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive into hex and start building up some of our own data visualizations. All right, so here I am in my hex project and for this first visualization, I want to visualize the total number of completed and canceled orders over time. Now, there are a couple of different ways I can add a chart cell to my project. To add an empty chart that we can configure the values ourselves, we can use our good friend, the add button between these cells and select the chart option. Although my preferred option is to actually use the output variable in our SQL cells and hover over the variable and we can use this visualize and chart cell option, which will automatically create the chart for us with our data frame ready to go. So we don't need to configure this ourselves. So I can actually go ahead and just go ahead and delete this cell right here at the bottom. So right now we have our default chart and it looks like we have a bar chart and I wanna make this into a line chart. So I will go to my chart type, select line, and now I need to figure out which variables I want to use for each axis. Now, since I want to visualize my amount of orders over time, I think it makes sense for us to use the ordered at variable for our X axis. Now, for the Y variable, it's going to be a little bit trickier. I know this chart looks kind of crazy right now. Oh my gosh. What we want to get is a count of how many orders were made on a particular day. A simple solution for this is to actually set our Y axis variable to say ordered at as well. And then we can use this aggregate function to get the count of how many orders were made on each day. And what that should do 
is now we kind of see this crazy mess of a chart going on in our cell. But why does my chart now look like just a whole bunch of random noise that I can't really understand? Well, since we are plotting temporal data, we want to make sure that our time unit is set to the correct scale. Um, so right now it looks like it's set to date and this is literally just going to plot every date that it sees and it's going to try to chart each data point for that date on our chart, which is something might be useful for some visualizations, but for our visualization, this is not what we want. What we really want to use is the year option because we want to see the count of orders for each year. So I will select the year option and we should see our chart get nice and cleaned up. Yes, we do. We have kind of have this slope going up. It kind of plateaus for a little bit, goes down kind of fast and then slows down and then goes down really fast because we don't have as much data for our year 2022. All right. Now, the last thing that I want to do is remember, I want to see the count of canceled and completed orders. So what I'm going to do is use my group by statement to actually separate this chart into my order status. And now we should see a line for our, our completed orders as well as our canceled orders right here at the bottom and you can see as we hover over the line we can get the count for completed and canceled orders for each year so it looks like in 2019 we're looking at about uh 1019 canceled orders and 7426 completed orders for the year 2019. i think that this chart is looking pretty good but the last thing that i want to do is customize this chart to my liking so what i'm going to do first is add a chart title that says order frequency per year looking good and this is just so that anyone who's looking at my chart can get a quick at a gun look of what this chart is supposed to represent what i also want to do is i as much as i love these default colors i kind of want to change them to have something that i like to look at because i like green i mean green where's green i like orange i like blue but you know what i like better i like purple and i like pink so if you didn't catch that, all I did was I came over to my style tab, came down here to color, and then you can select on the uh, color option that you want to change it to. And you even have the option to add some custom colors. We have some more swatches down here, or you can even type in some hex code. But I'm going to keep this as pink because I like the whole purple and pink collab I got going on here. This chart looks pretty darn good to me. Now, charts and hex also features some really cool drill down capabilities, which allows you to select specific parts of your chart and zoom in to what was going on within that time frame or within that section of your data for example I can investigate this little dip from 2019 to 21 because I'm I might be wondering like why why is my order frequency going down what's going on are people hitting my dumplings ah what's going on so what I can do is I can just go here and select the time frame that I want to choose so maybe it's gonna be 2019 to 2021 and I will select my this keep option which will automatically add the filter for me it looks like I got from 2019 to 2022 instead so i can even drill down further just to get those years that i want to look at and you can see here that i'm adding these filters for me automatically now one of the really cool things about this is that you can even investigate the data that is used to generate this chart so if i were to click on results this is the data that is actually powering this chart cell that you see and i can even page through this i can i can change the view i can format it all of these nice controls that we can use that we've even seen before in things like table displays and using the display option in our SQL cells. So I'm going to go back to my chart. And the last thing I want to point out is that once you apply a filter to your chart cell, you will get this output data frame that you can use in a downstream cell to further your analysis with this drilled down results. All right. So in this next visual, which we will be adding actually at the bottom of our project, we're right here at the very bottom. I want to visualize the results of this query, which is going to be the top five most profitable menu items for the year 2015 or any given year that we use when we change this filter right here this is essentially going to be a visual represent representation of this uh, sql cell matter of fact actually since this chart is going to be a direct result of this query i think this is a good place to talk about the chart option that you see in our sql cells rather than creating a brand new standalone chart where i have to select a data frame and configure it myself what i can do is actually just hit this chart option and it will create a chart for me directly in my sql cell i like how this is already a bar chart because this is exactly the type of chart that i want to make Again, I kind of want to customize this a little bit further and make sure that my axes are right. So again, I want to see the top five most profitable menu items for a given year. And it looks like we are getting the menu items at the bottom. And then we are also getting the sum of the profit already populated for us. So the first thing I want to do is actually set my bars to be in descending order so I can see which menu item is the most popular first and then see how that goes down from there. So what I can do is I can come down to the sort option in my X axis option and select Y axis descending, which should have our bars go from highest to lowest 
dope and the last thing I want to do is I want to get some distinct colors in my chart so I'm gonna add a group by statement so that each and group by the menu item which will give each bar its own distinct color and we can see that we see our legend right here on the side as well all right, so now it might be annoying to have to turn your head each time to read these labels, like the shrimp heart guy, the Zio long bio. Like I don't have to, I don't have to turn my head like that each time I read it. So let's go into the styling options and actually go to my X axis, and we're gonna change the label angle to be, let's say, like 45 degrees. Now we can see that these bars are, or we can see that these labels are much easier to read. And we can even change this to say zero degrees if we want our bar, if we want these menu item titles to be completely flat. Just keep in mind that if your labels are very long, they might overlap each other. Um, so you might want to find which angle is best for your data. Now, something that's pretty cool about visualizing our data directly in our SQL query is that if we actually change this query to say something like instead of 2015, I want to see 2019 instead this will automatically update this chart for us. Now, this is not specific to charts that are embedded in SQL cells and will work with any chart as long as the underlying data is changed. Doing it this way just allows you to keep your project more tidy and organized by not creating unnecessary cells. Now, speaking of changing my queries, what if I didn't have to do this manual update every time I wanted to change this order year value? What if instead we had some sort of external control that we could use as input to our query to dynamically make changes? Not only would our lives become much easier, but we could also give this control to others who are looking at our app. Well, stay tuned because in the next few episodes, we will be looking at how to inject a dose of interactivity to our projects so that we don't have to go into our queries and manually update these values each time. We can use some type of input parameter. Oof, and that's another one wrapped up. Let's do it. I just want you to know that you made it this far. I consider us basically to be best friends. We've explored different ways to configure and customize charts, making them not only aesthetically pleasing, but also informative. Now, as always, some key things to keep in mind. Hex has 12 distinct chart types for you guys to choose from and play around with. There are two pages in the chart cell, one to visualize your data and one to customize its appearance light just died and lastly you can create new charts using the add button and selecting the chart option or you can use the output data frame from a sql cell or a python cell or you can create a chart directly inside of your sql cells now, I hope you guys have enjoyed our time together. And in the spirit of today's episode, leave a comment down with your favorite chart type, whether that's in Hex or outside of Hex. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Adios. Can I know. Can you was? Hello. Never mind. All right. I'll see you guys later. <laughs>